Good morning everyone, how are you doing? I am Mr. H. Thank you for joining me for this video. We have here a practice question probability density function, a problem. We have two parts for this. We have this function which is given k divided by 1 plus x square. In the first part of the question we have to determine for that given function for what value of this k, some constant or coefficient k, will this function become a probability density function, PDF. Then the second part, we have to find the probability that your continuous random variable falls between 1 and minus 1. What's the probability of this specific instance? And remember, contrast this capitalized x, which is your continuous random variable, versus the basic x variable. These two are different. One is a variable x, the other one is your continuous random variable, which is annotated as a capitalized x. So always keep that in your mind. Anyhow, let's look at that function k divided by 1 over x squared based on what that k value could be like a 2, 3, 4, whatever the number might be, your graph always looks something like this. We're assuming this right here is 0 comma k because we don't know what the value of k is. It always ends up being a function which looks like this and then from what are a to b interval you're then looking at that area. But it, it looks like this with the x-axis as your horizontal asymptote. That right there is a function of that. So we have to determine the value of k for which this will be a probability density function. Keep in mind, the probability density function exists for this situation right here where f of x dx is equal to one or that interval minus infinity to infinity and that can guide you to answering this first part. So now let's utilize that framework and simply solve for that k value, that coefficient that will help us determine if this function is indeed a probability density function. Our integral will be this from minus infinity, we're looking here at positive infinity, that k can be pushed outside and you can do dx over 1 plus x square and you know all of this integral, definite integral should equal a 1. When you're looking at this, you can do a trigonometric substitution route, bring in the tan and the secant. You don't have to do that, you can just do the arc tan antiderivative. You know it has a template 1 over a, arc tan, x over a for anything which has this type of appearance, you can do that. And that's what I want to do. I have a k and I'm going to bring in the arctan antiderivative. Here a squared is equal to 1, a is equal to 1. See, a squared is indeed equal to a 1, therefore a is equal to 1. I'll have coming from here arctan x over a, which is just x over 1, which is just an x. From upper infinity, lower, minus infinity, all equaling to a 1. You know if you look very easily at the arctan antiderivative graph and or you can use a calculator, you have a pi over 2 horizontal asymptote minus pi over 2. You have a function which goes something like this. As the as your x-axis values approach minus infinity, your function approaches the upper asymptote pi over 2 and likewise down here in the direction of minus infinity it approaches minus pi over 2 and that very well comes right over here and brings in these values. You'll have a k arctan of infinity which is a pi over 2 minus arctan of minus infinity which is a minus pi over 2 is equal to a 1. You could have done all of this right here on a calculator. Just take a very large number, just like put all these large numbers here and, and do inverse tan, you'll get a value very close to 90 pi over 2. You can exactly do another large number and make it a minus and do inverse tan, you get a minus 89.999 but very close to minus 90 and that right there fits very well with what I'm showing you. When you do this final computation over here, you're having a pi over 2 plus pi over 2, you're getting a k pi is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1 over pi. This 1 over pi represents the coefficient we wanted here all, all along, 1 over pi and that's exactly the value which will come here into play in the second question. So we've done the first question, 1 over pi is the answer for that. For question number two, now that we know it's 1 over pi, our function has become and our integral has become this 1 over pi, we're looking at it now from here. Continuous random variable from minus 1 to 1. We have a dx over 1 plus x squared. You see how 1 over pi has come out? That's our k value. We have to integrate this. What is this? Well again, we have a 1 over pi and this right here is again an arctan, it's a 1 over a arctan x over a antiderivative of 1 to minus 1. a's in all instances here are 1, so it's a 1 over 1 and x over 1. And then you're doing a 1 over pi, you have a arctan 1 minus arctan minus 1. You know arctan 1 is easy, what angle? If you were to tan it, you'd get a value of 1. It's pi over 4 and the same thing for minus 1. Just do 1 and inverse tan. You'll get a pi over 4, 45 degrees. And minus 1, do inverse tan, you get a minus pi over 4, minus 45. So you're here having a 1 over pi and then you're having a pi over 4 minus, minus pi. 
over 4. Minus minus becomes a positive pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is a pi over 2. We're looking here at 1 over pi times pi over 2. When you multiply these, the pi's cancel out, you're looking here at a 1 over 2. The probability of this specific event over here is a 0 0.5. If you want to convert it into percentage, it's 50%. And that makes sense. And I'll show you exactly why it makes sense. It makes sense. I'll show you here by means of a graph. Allow me to eliminate this part right here and graphically demonstrate it. We now know that k is equal to 1 over pi. You look at 1 divided by pi. 1 divided by pi is a value 0.318. So you have here a y-intercept 0, 0,0318. You have a function which would look like this going towards minus infinity and here positive infinity. You're looking here from minus 1 to 1. You know what you're really looking at over here is an even function. If from here to right here, we're looking at this area and this happened to be 50%. The remaining 50% will lie right here from this point onwards and from this point onwards will be the remaining 50%. 25% of the values over here and 25% of the values or the probability over here. The main bulk of it is right here between minus one and one. You've just determined the probability of the event which is mirrored by this part of the function right over here for minus one. The probability your continuous random variable happen to be less than one or greater than minus one is 50% of the times it'll fall right here within this range. 25% of the times will be ahead of one, 25% of the times will be less than minus one. But these are all finite areas because this right here is a function which over even minus infinity to infinity very well demonstrates convergence. But that right there is it. Question number one was value one or pi. Question number two, the part two, the probability was 50% or 0.5 and we're done. Thank you, you all. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Bye.